Hi everybody, this is Dr. Nigro with a new chem calculations. These problems are going to be focused on empirical formula calculations and will be found in unit two of our curriculum. All right, so empirical formulas, as we see here, can be defined as the smallest whole number ratio of all elements within a compound. All right, so for example, glucose has a formula of C6H12O6, but this is not the empirical formula for glucose because I can divide each of these subscripts by six and get a smaller whole number set which would be CH2O. And this would be our empirical formula. All right, now we're gonna have another video that deals with the molecular formula of which C6H12O6 is, is an example. All right, and that molecular formula is the way that the compound actually exists in nature. All right, so how do we determine what the empirical formula is? So we need to know how much of each atom type is present within that particular compound, and that's gonna come from the mole. So we're gonna to need to get to the mole. All right, now there's a rhyme that I like to teach my students for working these problems, and it goes through the steps. The first one is percent to mass, and then we convert mass to moles, and then we're gonna divide by the smallest, and if needed, multiply until whole. All right, so for each of these steps, all right, I'm gonna talk about what we need to do. For percent to mass, for these problems, you're gonna be given the information for the elements in two different ways. It could be percentage value, so the percent composition of that particular compound. And if that's the case, you need to assume that you have 100 grams of that compound, all right, which is going to allow you to take that percentage value and convert it straight to grams, all right? So for example, if you have a compound that's 12% carbon and you have 100 grams of that compound, then 12% of 100 is 12 grams, all right? Once you know the gram values of each element, you can convert to moles, and for that, we're going to need the molar mass as we saw back in the last unit, which means that you are gonna need your periodic table. So make sure you have that handy along with your calculator. All right, one thing to keep in mind here, these problems, they're very, very touchy when it comes to decimals. So I tell my students to hold four decimal places once they convert into moles, all right? And I'll point that out as we go through a couple problems. All right, and then the last step, this multiply until hold, this is not always needed. All right, this pops up when you do your percent to mass, you divide it by the smallest, all right, and you look at those values, and they should be whole numbers, but every now and then you might get one and a half or two and two thirds, and we can't have fractions of atoms, so that requires us to then multiply by a whole number factor to get everything to a whole number. And I'll show you an example of that as well. All right, so in general, percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by smallest, and then multiply until whole. All right, so let's look at this first problem. All right, it says to determine the empirical formula for a compound that has mass percentages of 67.9% carbon, 5.7% hydrogen, and 26.4% nitrogen. All right, so we start by assuming that we have 100 grams of our compound. All right, so what that means is then I have 67.9 grams of carbon. I'm going to have 5.70 grams of hydrogen and 26.4 grams of nitrogen. So there's our percent to mass step. All right, next up, mass to moles. So we're gonna multiply using our conversion factor, using the molar mass of each element. I know that one mole 
of carbon has a mass of 12.01 grams. All right, and when I divide 67.9 by 12.01, I get 5.6536 moles of carbon. All right, and again, please notice how many decimals I carried there. All right, for hydrogen, I know that one mole of hydrogen has a mass of 1.01 .01 grams. And when I do that division, I find I have 5.6436 moles of hydrogen. Then last but not least, nitrogen. One mole of nitrogen has a mass of 14.01 .01 grams. And when I do that division, I find I have 1.8844 moles of nitrogen. All right, so we did percent to mass. Now we've done mass to moles. Divide by smallest. So I look at these three values and I find that nitrogen is the smallest. So I'm going to divide all three values by 1.8844. So I'm going to get a 1 for nitrogen. The reason we do this, if we choose one of the larger values, then for nitrogen we're going to get less than 1. And we can't have less than one atom of that element. All right, so go up to carbon. I divide that by 1.8844. And I find that that is 3. I'll do the same with hydrogen, 1.8844. Find that is also 3. So I have three whole numbers, so I don't need to multiply into a whole. All right, and these are going to be my subscripts. And since they're already whole, I'm good to go. So instead of 69.7, 5.7, 26.4, I've converted to moles, and I find the empirical formula is C3H3. N. So three carbons, three hydrogens, and one nitrogen. All right, let's try one more. We're going to slide down to this bottom problem. All right, this one reads, what is the empirical formula of a compound that contains 5.3 grams of chlorine and 8.4 grams of oxygen? All right, so for this problem, I'm already at the gram, so I don't need my first step. I don't need percent to grams, percent, uh, percent to mass. All right, so I'm just going to start with the second step, mass to moles. So I have 5.31 grams of chlorine. To convert that into moles, I need the molar mass. And I know that one mole of chlorine has a molar mass of 35.46 grams. And that's going to equal 0 0.1497. All right, again, carrying lots of digits. All right, I go down to oxygen, 8.40 grams of oxygen. Same thing, except I use the molar mass of oxygen, and one mole of oxygen has a molar mass of 16 grams. I do that division, and I find I have 0 0.5250 moles of oxygen. All right, so I've done mass to moles. I need to divide by smallest. I look. The smallest is chlorine, so 0.1497. It's going to give me one atom of chlorine in the compound. And then when I do the division with oxygen, I find... 3.5. All right, so here I am going to have to do the multiply until whole step. All right, I can't have one atom of chlorine and three and a half atoms of oxygen. That won't work. So I have to multiply to make it whole. All right, the easiest thing to do is multiply by two, which will get rid of my half and give me a seven. But I have to do the same thing, the original chlorine. So I'm going to get a two there as well. And now I have two whole numbers. So my formula will be Cl2O7. All right. Now keep in mind if you have 0.5, that's like a half. So you're going to multiply by two. If you have 0.33, that's like a third. So you're going to multiply by three. All right. So you want to multiply by a whole number that's going to remove that fraction. Okay. All right. Hope that helps.